My new project is called Vonnegut. I started the process around two years ago. I was reading a lot of his novels and I, I just started composing music based on the characters and themes in, in Kurt Vonnegut's novels. And um, after about you know, doing that with 10, 10 to 12 books, I had a handful of compositions. So I decided to get a band together of, of all Indianapolis musicians and, and record this music. Um, and I had a great group of musicians and then also Mina Cohane helped me arrange this music. And, uh, it turned into a, a really, really fun project. Making this project during the pandemic was, um, in a way, kind of nice. It, it kept me busy, it, it gave me something to do, something to sort of work towards, because all, all the gigs essentially just dropped out. And uh, I was so happy that um, the festival is still happening in some capacity and that, that they called me to, to present this work. Um, through the uh, virtual Indie Jazz Fest. We, we had a chance to record it at WFYI Studios and, and we decided to add a string quartet to the, the core group that recorded the album. So uh, Mina Cohane again helped me arrange the, uh, the 10 piece group and we had someone reading excerpts. So it, it was a, a bigger production and, and it's, it was a lot of fun to, to put together. To me personally, Kurt Vonnegut's always been been one of my my heroes, my literary heroes, and um, and the the longer I live in Indianapolis, the more I feel um, connected to the people who have come before me and and done great things, you know, and been um, huge uh, successes globally. Um, not just Kurt Vonnegut, but you know our jazz tradition here. So it really meant a lot to me to um, to be able to hopefully pay tribute to, to not just Kurt Vonnegut, but, but the tradition of um, greatness that, that we have here in this city. 2020 has brought a lot of our arts organizations in Indianapolis adversity, and the Indianapolis Jazz Foundation felt unwavering in its commitment to produce Indy Jazz Fest this year. We had to pivot a lot of times, and you know we were in a state of flux for a while, but we landed on presenting commissions by artists here in Indianapolis. And um, one of those artists was Charlie Ballantyne, and he wrote, his body of work is called Vonnegut. It's based on the literary works of Kurt Vonnegut, and he put together a seven-piece band with a string quartet, and also some narration. The foundation partnered with the Kurt Vonnegut Museum and Library, as well as WFYI, and uh, we recorded uh, this concert at WFYI Studios. So without further ado, please enjoy Charlie Ballantyne's Vonnegut. You're going to deliver your message after all, said Constant. Anybody who has traveled this far on a fool's errand, said Salo, has no choice but to uphold the honor of fools by completing the errand. My mate died today, said Constant. Sorry, said Salo. I would say, is there anything I can do? But Skip once told me that that was the most hateful and stupid expression in the English language. Constant rubbed his hands together. The only company he had left on Titan was whatever company his right hand could be for his left. I miss her, he said. You finally fell in love, I see, said Salem. Only an earthling year ago, said Constant. It took us that long to realize that a purpose of human life, no matter who is controlling it, is to love whoever is around to be loved.
I hadn't named it anything. If I thought of the bullets hitting anything, I don't remember now. I was the great marksman anyway. If I aimed at nothing, then nothing is what I would hit. The bullet was a symbol, and nobody was ever hurt by a symbol. It was a farewell to my childhood and a confirmation of my manhood. Why didn't I use a blank cartridge? What kind of a symbol would that have been?
Dear sir, poor sir, brave sir, he read. You are an experiment by the creator of the universe. You are the only creature in the entire universe who has free will. You are the only one who has to figure out what to do next and why. Everybody else is a robot, a machine. Some persons seem to like you and others seem to hate you. And you must wonder why. They are simply liking machines and hating machines. You are pooped and demoralized, Red Dwayne. Why wouldn't you be? Of course it is exhausting having to reason all the time in a universe which wasn't meant to be reasonable.
You were sick, but now you're well, and there's work to do. You were sick, but now you're well, and there's work to do, said Trout.
How did he come to be an outlaw? It was his own idea. He asked McCabe to outlaw him and his religion too, in order to give the religious life of the people more zest, more tang. He wrote a little poem about it, incidentally. Castle quoted this poem, which does not appear in the books of Bokanon. So I said goodbye to government, and I gave my reason that a really good religion is a form of treason. Bokanon suggested the hook, too, as the proper punishment for Bokanonists, he said. It was something he'd seen in the Chamber of Horrors in Madame Tussauds. He winked ghoulishly. That was for zest, too. Did many people die on the hook? Not at first, not at first. At first it was all make-believe. Rumors were cunningly circulated about executions, but no one really knew anyone who had died that way. McCabe had had a good old time making bloodthirsty threats against the Bokanonis, which was everybody. And Bokanon went into cozy hiding in the jungle, Castle continued, where he wrote and preached all day long and ate good things his disciples brought him. McCabe would organize the unemployed, which was practically everybody, into great Bokanon hunts. About every six months, McCabe would announce triumphantly that Bokanon was surrounded by a ring of steel, which was remorselessly closing in. And then the leaders of the remorseless ring would have to report to McCabe, full of chagrin and apoplexy, that Bokanon had done the impossible. He had escaped, had evaporated, had lived to preach another day. Miracle.
sat back. There was nothing more to do now. From now on, everything was automatic. In 36 minutes, the ship would land itself near the end of a bus line on the outskirts of Indianapolis, Indiana. USA, Earth, solar system, Milky Way. It would be three in the morning there. It would also be winter. The spaceship landed in four inches of fresh snow in a vacant lot on the south side of Indianapolis. No one was awake to see it land. <laughs>